Today, we have a fascinating topic. It's one on a lot of people's minds. It has, it has to do with what can we really expect from EFT, from optimal EFT, from the unseen therapist? Do we expect one-minute wonders? Do we expect lo longer versions of all this? How deep can we go? And all of that, and it's uh, as it turns out, it's um, these opinions have been given by lots of people over the internet. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. But joining me in discussing all this is going to be someone with a lot of experience with all of this. That's Anne Ryan. So let me bring Anne on. Anne, say hello. Hi, Gary. Hi, everyone. Hi. So let's start off. Let's start off with what amounts to a. Um, I think a fairly common perception about with most people about EFT and all of optimal EFT and all that, and that is the idea of one minute wonders. Oh gee, EFT is like magic. All we have to do is go tap, 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 or bring an unseen therapist, or maybe say some magic words, and lifelong things just go away instantly. Maybe it takes five minutes or something like that typically called one minute wonders. I suppose you've heard that before, Anne, have you not? I have heard that before. And, and I come across it with, with a degree of, of regularity with, with people that, you know, make contact with me to work with them. Um, you know, often it's like, can I book a session? You know, which is fine for obviously kind of testing out the waters and do I like this person to work with them? But but underneath it, quite often there is a, if I just have a session or you know, a couple of sessions, it's going to completely resolve my issue. Um, and while, you know, potentially, you know, I, I mean, potentially, of course it could, but realistically, a lot of the time we've a lot more um, sifting through all our issues that we've built up over the years that took years to build. So more than likely they're not going to disappear in a moment. But there's a reason why people think that. And I want to get into that for the moment because I think it's really important. And by the way, we are, what we are going to get to is there are spectacular results available, but we need to be realistic about how to go about that and, and how deep we can go and what's in the way of all of this. You know, we were, we're going to get into the real depths here. So I'm going to urge everybody to really stay with us because we're going to be a lot of meat in this. Okay. But let me begin. When I, when I first brought EFT out, it was in 1995 and it was only tapping. We didn't have unseen therapists at the time. And I had zero idea that it'd be, it'd be in the hands of millions of people. I thought maybe 30 or 40 people would like it or something. Okay. So I didn't put any legal fences around it. I didn't put any, there were any royalties or wasn't anything like that. I just here. Do what you want to do with it. And it just took off, partly because I didn't have any fences and partly because it worked. Okay? So oh, that's the good news. The not so good news is there were no standards and and people would take what they thought was EFT, something I wrote in my, one of my earlier writings and manuals and stuff. They would put it through their own belief systems, add stuff to it. Take, take stuff away, you know, and then put it out. And so, like, there's over a thousand books now on Amazon written about EFT or his nickname, Tapping. Right? And as far as I can tell, they're all different. I have, I've yet to find any two that are the same. They all have different angles on them. Right? That's not to criticize it. It's just to say that's what happens when you put it out and it goes through all these different belief systems. It gets shifted. And one of the shifts that occurs is that, oh, look, all you have to do is do some magic scripts. You just tap on certain points and then say certain words. And I'll give you the words, you know, and they, they sell the words and everything else. And do that and you'll get these one minute wonders. Mm -hmm. And what happens, this is important to recognize for everybody listening in, is people that get the one minute wonders and they do occur. Those are the ones that write in and say, hooray, hooray, look at what I got. And so that's what I get public. I did that early on because I didn't know any better. But behind the scene, most people 
aren't getting one minute wonders. They may get results, but they're not getting one minute wonders. And they don't know how to really un unravel all this, unfold it, get into the depths and really do what EFT is designed to do. And it can really do all of that. But it takes more than a few magic words or a one minute wonder and so on. In fact, I was even getting letters from people eventually who would actually start trying to do this in a one minute wonder kind of way. And they would actually get worse. I mean, seriously worse uh, because they didn't know what they were doing. Um, and there's a lot more to it than just a few magic words and tap here and tap there or bring an unseen therapist. So anyway, that's my little intro. I presume you've had some experience with one minute wonders. Can you talk about that if you have? Yes, I have. Um, I mean, people with um, somebody with a dog phobia that, you know, one, one session and gone. The thing is, though, that there was one incident that could give a huge fear of a dog. You know, so there was one single specific event to work on. We, you know, worked on all the aspects of it, you know, all that came up, all the aspects. Um, I've worked with other people that have fear of dogs or fear of something else. And it's taken a lot more sessions because that foundation that was like one event kind of got built on because, oh, and then there was that time some dog snarled at them that got, you know, like it kind of gets built on. So even with something as simple as that, it's it's not always simple. Yeah, it can be simple. I'm, I'll give a great example, uh, a one minute wonder for me. I had a knee injury a few years ago that was really, really, really severe. I was convinced I was gonna be on crutches for six weeks. I brought in unseen therapists for it. And within 24 hours, it was completely gone. My leg had swollen up. It was just painful. It was stiff. I mean, I was convinced that I was doomed for crutches for all this time. 24 hours later, after bringing an unseen therapist, gone. Okay. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is I tell people about that. And, and, and what human beings want to hear is, oh, that's how it works. I've got an issue. Oh, do it for me. And 24 hours later or 10 minutes later or whatever, it's all gone. No, mm -hmm. we can get rid of it. Yes. But there's so many, as you say, with the dog phobia, there's so many other things often that go into it. You know, mm -hmm. you have a you have a case of multiple cirrhosis that you talked mm -hmm. to me about. Talk about that for a moment, could you? Yeah, um, I, 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 somebody that I've been working with that has had multiple cirrhosis for 20 years. Um, but in the last couple of years is now in a wheelchair. Um and, you know, the, the, I suppose, aim of coming to me is, you know, would like to be able to kind of be able to get around upright without the wheelchair again, even with assistance or aids. But, would, you know, that would be a huge um, step up. Um, and, and, you know, as, as I was saying to you earlier, Gary, like, you know, we've done a few sessions and, and from my position, there's a lot more peace coming in and there's all of that coming. However, um, you know, this person said to me, oh, I saw a video Gary did, you know, at some point, you know, in the past. And this man had the same condition as me, got up out of his wheelchair and he was able to walk, you know. Yeah, so yeah. that's the expectation. So it's like, so I'm coming to you. We we'll have a few sessions and I'd really love to be able to get up and walk out of my wheelchair. Yeah. Well, as it turns out. And I remember that session with that fellow, not that the session, that event with the, or the thing with that fellow that got out of the wheelchair. He not only got out of the wheelchair, I mean, this was a fellow also that had, I think it was six serious operations on his back because he was injured as a child and you know, had difficulty there as well. Um, but he ended up all of it clearing and he was doing jumping jacks for everybody, et cetera. And it, Cleared up and, you know, I follow up a year later, it was still gone and all of that. What people don't realize that that was not a one minute wonder mm -hmm. <laughs> or a one session wonder. The, the, uh, the lady who, who was doing EFT with him at the time took six to eight months to do mm -hmm. that. He was very diligent about it. He was willing to get down into what was really emotional issues behind it. And many of us, were, you know, we're, we're, we're willing to do that to a degree, but there's a, some of these things we don't, 
We'd rather not touch, you know, our guilt issues, for example. Well, we'll do that later some other time. The resentment issues, well, they're better, but, you know, I still don't like them, you know. Um, and we, if we ho keep holding on to the cause, we're going to hold on to the symptom <laughs> that the cause yeah. creates. <laughs> And I've got to, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, and sometimes we don't even realize, you know, we think I've dealt with all my resentment. No, I've dealt with all my guilt. I've dealt, you know, we, you know, as human beings, people can think like there's nothing else left there, you know, and it's probably just we need to dig further. But also things get buried for good reason. You know, we put them underneath because there was a time where if we didn't, it may have been just too much, too overwhelming, or we didn't sure. have the capacity to deal with it. So yeah. when we've buried them really well, we can get very, you know, people can get very frustrated and think, but I'm telling you, I've no more resentment, like I've, I've found it all. And yet there's this, you know, box of it buried in the basement somewhere that, you know, sometimes we forget it is even put in the basement, not to mind thinking to go down and find it. So yeah. it's it's not completely conscious that I'm just not going to go there to that uncomfortable bit. It can be that, but it can be, I don't even remember that I have that box left to unpack. Yeah, and that's what you really want to get to. And, and the fact that we have physical ailments, MS being an example, but cancer is also an example, and so is arthritis, and on and on and on goes the list. The fact that we have those, that is your body. It's really interesting. You won't find this in medical books, I don't think, okay? But that's your body telling you you haven't cleaned up your emotional stuff, okay? Now, you may you may say, and really mean, well, I sure have because I'm not mad at my father anymore for, you know, whatever, okay, et cetera. Well, it doesn't seem that way sometimes, but I, 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 was just, I, was, I had a meeting here with one of our practice groups. They invited me in, one of our optimal EFT course membership practice groups. And one of the ladies in the practice group was somebody I had dealt with myself. And she would say to me, she had a few physical ailments. And she would say to me with some repetition over several months of some conversations, Gary, I've worked on everything, all the emotional stuff. And these physical things, they don't budge much at all, if anything. Uh, but I'm saying, you know, that's just suggesting that there's more underneath all of that mm -hmm. than you're aware of. So anyway, I, I, I'm in with this group and she's in this group. And we, the group starts talking and next thing you know, she's in tears. Oh, interesting. Why the tears? And now suddenly she tunes into something and really it was a, a deep thing. Like she was rejected a lot during childhood. Okay, well, join the parade, you know, <laughs> almost everybody gets criticized, rejected or whatever, but, you know, she got it in, in big in, in space, but she didn't want to really address it. It made her feel bad to go to that because when she does that, she feels guilty because she, maybe she could have could have ca caused it. She feels resentful and the church says you shouldn't feel resentful. Mm -hmm. And so she, she is anyway, didn't want to touch that one. Underneath all of that was a big one that she didn't want to touch. Mm -hmm. Now, when we start to learn how EFT, optimal EFT, unseen therapist, really works and really gets underneath it, now we can take, take care of not only some of these other issues, and, and these more surface issues are good ones. I mean, you know, who needs to have your headaches all the time? And, you know, and it's nice to have a more peaceful relationship with your brother-in-law than you used to have and all of that. But the big ones underneath, that's what we got to dig up. And that's see, un unseen therapist is remarkable. Once you learn to trust her and telling you what the real issues are, you've had those experiences, right? Anne? yeah, very much so. Very much so. And can, can I tell you a personal one the other day is I, I consider I have done, you know, been through a lot of events, a lot of beliefs, a lot of, you know, things that have happened, you know, like a lot. The other day I had to drop something somewhere, which was kind of just an area I wouldn't normally go to. And as I was following my my Google Maps and was bringing me there, I suddenly realized I, I know this area. Okay. 
I, I worked on community in that area for 10 years, um, about 15 or 20 years ago, but for 10 years, okay? It was not a happy time. Like work-wise, it was not a happy time. And I'm driving just with this errand in, in mind going, that's 10 whole years I haven't visited in terms of, I have never addressed a specific event from those 10 years. I, I had forgotten. I mean, I knew logically, oh, I had that job for 10 years in that place. But as I drove through it and I passed houses that I knocked on doors and I had visited in the role I had at the time, I thought, oh, my God, if I ever had to stand on that doorstep again. Like, so, I mean, the best and the most experienced of people and ordinary people and all of us can suddenly find like that's 10 years of stuff that I, I that I now, you know, we begin to unpack and, and whatever. But. So anyway, I diverted a little, but it's just to show that the, the thing of I've done it all. I've found every event. I've made all my lists and we never have. I mean, I think that's the bottom line. We never have. There'll always be something else that the unseen therapist kind of throws up. And, and again, one of the things that tells us that is a physical issue does not budge. We have found over and over and over and over again that if 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 we will aim at the cause, the emotional cause, the unresolved anger, grief, guilt, all that stuff. If we can really, uh, if we'll aim at that rather than the symptom, my shoulder hurts, I've got this disease symptom and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, once we aim at cause and do it well, then we can start getting, getting to issues that medicine, and the, the other man-made methods walk right by. Mm -hmm. you know, there are pills for things. It's just help with symptoms and stuff like that. But here we're getting down to the real, what really causes it. Mm -hmm. That's really important. Um, I, I want to make, I, I talked about this just briefly a, a little bit ago, but I want to talk about this. One of the things that most of us just don't want to look at and we keep under the table um, is guilt. Now, we typically are perfectly happy to deal with some kind of a trauma because somebody else did something to us someplace, okay? So we'll work on that, and we get great results from that. You know, our war veterans, you know, the, the war did things to me, yes, 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 and so, and we did get a lot of good work done there, a lot of good work done there. But when it comes to guilt, well, we'll talk about that later. That's a little too close to home. That's something I did or I shouldn't have done or I, maybe I should have done and didn't or whatever. I don't like myself for it. I don't, uh, maybe, yeah, it's you know, later. Or we repress it, don't, we never even see it again. We have so repressed, but it's kicking around under the hmm. surface. Guilt is a big one. Guilt is a big one. Guilt is a, it is so big and so prevalent. I could almost say if you're not, getting the physical results you want chances are guilt is in there someplace unresolved okay mm -hmm. now <laughs> i, I want to shift a little bit this is an important topic i know you have thoughts on it as well that's the whole idea of free will okay yeah but let me let me talk about that for a minute because it's really important especially when you're dealing with the unseen therapist okay it's, it's so much more powerful but there's some other things you've got to really digest in it and one of them is we have in the spiritual sense we have free will to believe in whatever we want to believe okay if you want to believe in certain political things or certain religious things or whatever they are whether or not they're good for you whether or not they're right or wrong that is your right to believe them including if you want to believe you are a separated body and not part of the oneness okay which is what my book the unseen therapist talks about a lot and by the way, if you haven't read the book, those are listening in, there's some essential links below this video. Please, the link to the free book is there. But anyway, so we, you know, and I, oh, free will. We're, I, I forgot what I was talking about, free will, okay. So when we recognize that we have free will and that unseen therapist is not, not, not going to interfere with our right to believe as we choose to believe hmm. because that's 
to do for her to interfere and say, well, you can have this belief, but not that one. Okay. Uh, that's a thought police. That's her interfering with your right. It's a very unloving thing to do, etc. So what we need to do, and this is the, this is really important, really important. I, 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 I want to see if I can't bring in an orchestra or something and some trumpets, you know, to emphasize all of this. Is your job, Anne, and my job with the unseen therapist isn't to be the therapist. We are assistants to the therapist. She does the work. So we work with ourselves if we're our own client or a client. And we help bring these ideas up onto the top of the table. We reframe them. It's a skill in, involved in that. But when we do that and we bring it up on top of the table, instead of under under the table where we're hiding, forgetting, and don't tread, don't tread here kind of thing, put them on top of the table. Ah, unseen therapist, magnificent job, Shh, gone, okay, to the extent we put them on the top of the table. So guilt is one of those things, oh, we'll keep it under the table for the time being. Okay. And she won't touch it because it's an unloving thing to do. Now that's me pontificating a bit. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, well, I have two thoughts. I, one is because we as human beings are the best in the world for being very hard on ourselves. Um, so <laughs> for anyone who's listening to this and thinking, oh yeah, gosh, that's me and I'm terrible and I'm not taking my guilt you know, out from under the table. Like there's often a very scared younger part of us that has put it under the table to begin with. Sure. You know, and, and so it feels that it's really important, I think, for all of us to approach it as compassionately as possible. Because the more that we're kind of got to be, no, oh, you know, wagging finger or whatever, like the less likely the guilt is to actually want to come out and be put on top of the table. So I just wanted to throw in that part. Um, and there was something else, but it's not there. Well, let me, while you're thinking of that, let me, one comes up for me here, which I, I think listeners will really relate to. And that is our veterans, all the PTSD and all the people that have been trying to do things with drugs and whatever, and gone nowhere with it, basically. It's still a big problem. We have, we have over and over and over and over again helped vets. They get over it. They no longer wake in the middle of the night, swing in their fist. They don't sweat and they sleep all through the night. I mean, they can talk about these events with, with peace. It's not their favorite topic, but they can talk about it without getting all worked up and just another event in their life and so on. As I've dealt with them and we've taken care of those things and, and brought great peace, I will often find there's even deeper stuff underneath and it goes clear back to childhood. Mm -hmm. If they were told in childhood, be responsible for everything, be responsible. They're getting to war and, and something happens. You're, you end up thinking you're responsible for it and that adds to it. Okay. Or you did, you did, it's just about everybody does. We do stuff in our childhood that <laughs> we shouldn't do. Okay. So we, we have these, this guilt for it. Okay. <laughs> you know, we, we abuse somebody's cat or whatever the case may be. And, and we, or hit somebody and shouldn't have or lied or whatever. Okay. We, we, we all this stuff happens. And we feel guilty about it, and it's unresolved. Yeah. Or parents are abusing us, and we feel guilty that we're like we caused it, and it's not resolved. You get in the war arena, and something happens, and you yeah. and you feel guilt about that thing in that war arena. You're not done with the guilt just because we take care of that event in that war arena. Ooh, that got even worse because it's unresolved. It's bouncing off of the stuff in the past. Yeah. So all of this, all of this, if somebody wants really good in-depth training, that's available to them. But you're not probably going to find that kind of stuff in these Amazon books and, you know, many of the websites that are out there talking about EFT. Hmm. Gary, there's, an, there's, there's just me, uh, two things that just come to mind. And one is in terms of we can block the unseen therapist in many ways. But one yes. of the ways which sometimes... Um, I come across it a, a number of times. Somebody will have had something happen to them. Um, I, I had a lady and she remembers being a child and s waking at night and seeing this presence at the end of the bed. Okay. 
she got such a fright. She was about five. She got such a fright. What she said in her mind was, I never want that to happen again. 40 years later, she's still trying to access that because now she would love to access that connection to unseen therapist and all of that. So it's so easy for us to like make these vows. You know, as a five-year-old, you're scared as the middle of the night. You know, I mean, some other five-year-old might see that and go, wow, look at that amazing looking light at the end of my bed. But that wasn't her reaction. She yes. got a huge fright. And like this huge wall went up that, you know, we've done a lot of work on it, she and I together, but this wall went up that is very, very tentative about coming down again. And of course, now in her 50s, she would love the wall down and just unseen therapist and converse and, and whatever. So sometimes there are things we have to go way back to that have like just gone, whoa, you know, I might be saying consciously I want it, but the five-year-old does not want it because she got a fright back then. Sure. Yeah, and there, there's story after story after story after story. But I think to summarize, to summarize all of this, um, yes, you can get one minute wonders, but they are nowhere near as prevalent as you might see on the internet because a lot of people just don't want to report their not so wonderful stuff because <laughs> they just because they don't want to look bad. Okay, well, it didn't work for me, you know, so you don't see those very often. But here you're gonna see our successes, yes, of course. But we that's not where we learn. We learn, we learn from ah, why isn't it working now? Why do we seem to be stopped? Why are we stopping unseen therapists is another way to say it sometimes. What are we withholding? What do we need to dig into and put on top of the table? And so on. We've got the ultimate healing source here, but we have to learn how to use it, how to use it. And there's a lot of depth there. There's a lot of depth that escapes a lot of people, but we're, I want to thank you, Anne. We've opened the door for that here okay so gratitude 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 anything more you want more you want to say uh no i think that's lovely thanks gary all right all right well okay everybody uh we will we will see you again next time until then big hug from california see you later